All right, Steven's hard at it in here. Giving her a coat of paint. Just remember, we gotta kinda clean up some of these areas, but yep. this is gonna look great. It looks like a big empty box now. Yeah. Pretty lightweight. Yeah, Aaron was picking it up. <laughs> no engine in it. So. Oh man, we're going somewhere. Ship box to the top. Yep. All right, guys, welcome back to BFI. We are uh, in here tinkering on Shona. So let's get inside and see where we're at. The plate is straight all the way out, is it not? It is. He was right. <laughs> it doesn't look like they are. It's deceiving. It looks can be deceiving. You can weld a flat plate on top of your two tubes. Just do whatever you want to do. Then you could or cut, continue you what could, we're what we were doing. Yeah. You could continue what you're doing too, but you could do a plate and then you could cut a tube in half that's smaller than that tube, like the tube you have, and weld the halves on the bottom and then it would slide in your channels just fine. It would do exactly what you're asking it to do. <laughs> and it would fit in this gap. I don't think the halves would fit. I don't know. You don't think the halves would even fit? But either way, you gotta get some sort of tubes on these that you need up in here. And these are beautiful. I mean, we got a pretty good idea. Beautiful bars up in here. The those yeah. holes being different heights are what really yeah, know, it just gets you. Got me more thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we make them slide sideways. Like, is this hole and this hole in the same no. spot? Yeah. Or same height? No. Those heights are different too. Yeah, this one's the lowest. These in here kind of rough. I mean, they do. And the whole car being lower on that side is. It's pretty close. Keep that up there. Look, your overhang over here. Here's your overhang over here on the tube. It's about the same on the floor, I would think. I mean, this floor's not glued as good as that side. This side is. Yeah. I was looking at the bottom of the tube. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Oh, you were looking at the bottom? Yeah. Yep. It, oh, it's overhanging more on the bottom it's of the tube, huh? More on the right side. Yeah. Okay. But they're very close. Well, it matters because when I was looking at the mount, I was looking at this side, not that side. So if we go to this one, it's higher, so it's probably why you just got to be higher into that. All right. Now use a straight edge. Now it's definitely not. Mm -hmm. If it's built that way and slides, it should be okay. Yeah. Good to go. All right, guys, it's been a minute, but today we are back on show enough. So where we left off was stuff with this clutch pedal. So as you see Steve push the clutch pedal, pump it. You can see it picks the transmission up. We need to go ahead and reinforce that. And what we did was we picked up a transmission mount kit from our friends over at Chassis Engineering. Now we've looked over it and Steven's kind of been playing with it. So we're gonna get on trying to put this kit in and see if we can't stiffen that, that up a little bit. Hopefully it helps our, our clutch. The firewall stopped moving. If not, we're just gotta we're gonna have to address the firewall stuff, but we want to start here, get the transmission mount done first, and then uh, go from there. So guys, let's get on this, and show enough, let's get this baby rocking. Well, 1,132 pounds for your empty Cynic. Yeah. Just got a little bit of... I totally zeroed it. <laughs> We got another package, guys. We have been getting the packages like crazy. This is from our good friend, Steven De La Cruz. And uh, he's been hard at work coming up with some really cool products. Bunch of stickers and tags. Here yeah, we so go, um, folks. Trigger wheels. 36-1. And 
And this 36 is, minus one K series. Got the keyway in it. And now this is with the keyway and the gear and everything. Very cool. So a 24 minus two, 36 minus one. And then he puts the degree of timing to put into the ECU. That's pretty, yeah. uh, that's pretty rad. And then oh. front wheel speed sensor. So see this one's a little shorter, got a bracket and everything and your ring. Very cool kit. Yeah, he was telling me about this depth. He's been working on this depth to get more of an accurate reading. So another good one. D16, um, D Y8 okay. crank trigger. Ah, I know somebody that could use that. Very cool. This is the B1 that I've been wanting to try on my car. So it's got the long keyway. That's what started this whole thing in the conversation between he and I was, you guys saw in the video, uh, Jamie had really messed up the snout on his crank. So we were talking about uh, the longer keyway and a little bit tougher material and here it is. So, yeah. and so this is the sensor, plugs and pins. His, this is the like OBD2 style trigger wheel. With his two count yep. on it. Looks like another minus two deal. Yep. Very cool. Thanks, Steven. And uh, we look forward to trying this out. And uh, we'll share with you guys every step of the way on all this stuff. All right, so I was a little excited after we got back from PRI. I didn't I forgot to film it, but I put the new front end on. It looks fantastic. It, yeah, it looks <laughs> it looks awesome. You've uh, upped a level. <laughs> super lightweight, huh? Yeah, super. Way lighter than that. Yeah. Tires shouldn't stick as far out now. I'm digging what you got going on. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this transmission out. We need to weld that little bracket down there, and then we need to mark these tubes where we need to take some paint off uh, to where we can. Put our half moons into the chassis here so let's dive in and start that whole process at the same time we can trim the bottom of the dash because we're gonna have to get these ears and some of the stuff out of our way it was just the nicer dash that i had but uh we really need to make it to where we can get in and out and uh, be able to service this trans and clutch very simply so uh let's start by marking that and then pulling those four bolts uh, we got to pull the drive shaft as well and uh, this little cover this little cover we also are gonna probably uh, change up because I feel like this tube here should at least be right about here or we're gonna figure out adding another one to where I can just uh, feel a little bit more secure and have the u-joint itself covered yeah enclosed so if the u-joints enclosed then uh, feel a little safer about it all we noticed a lot of the race cars that PRI and stuff. Uh, this stuff's exposed some, but but this tube yeah, here is definitely just comes to right at these cups. Yeah, and I feel better about it. So we got to grab the tools to pull this stuff, pull the drive shaft, pull the transmission. Just about out. So. Pull those bolts, and uh, this transmission is coming out. How do you read that? Who's this guy? I, I need carbon too. It's good to see you. We've missed you. Yeah, I came, but you know what, sir? You always in <laughs> other states. Yeah, no, now we're all here. So yeah. next couple months. Uh, it looks young. I know. I look like you now. <laughs> we got the hobby look. We, we like Mitchell say or Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so our new worry is right here. Those tabs are hitting this tube and we aren't quite out of the transmission yet. We have a little ways to go and that's part of what we're trying to do here. So we're trying to make it to where you plop the transmission into the slide bracket and just slide it on in. But that is not looking like it's gonna let us. We're gonna know or else. Even if you notch the bottom brackets, you notch. 
Yeah. I was saying redesign. I know. I'm, just... I'm not saying notch. I'm saying like change it all. Because that, yeah, that one plate could be notched, but the tubes and everything would have to be moved in inward or like we, were, we talked about the flat plate thing. Because the width of these tubes also won't allow it to come through here. So that's what it, we're kind of fighting because these tubes coming out with the transmission just wouldn't happen coming up through here. Yeah, that one would. Because it has to fit within this boundary to be yeah. able the to come in and side. out. Yeah, the one on your side. This side looks okay? Oh yeah, that oh, yeah this nice. side would probably work. Yeah, and then look at like when it comes out, you like shift it over maybe. Yeah, shift it over, but you gotta get the input shaft all the way out or yeah. else it does not work. That's what I'm saying, notch the plate so then you can squeeze it between and then you can shift it one way and pull it Yeah, that's kinda something that, like that may work, but it still has to be able to come out to that point. So we're in puzzle moment. We'll figure it out, but this is part of it. Making it all work. All right, now that we've got the slide mount out, I can pull the transmission and uh, we'll set that aside and we'll start reworking all this area and uh, see if we can't make this thing fit. All right, we're gonna make some changes to this interior. We've got some different seats gonna go in here. These bars, we've determined they're kind of in our way. So we're gonna go ahead and change all of that up as well. I know it seems like we're going backwards. Uh, we went through all the rules. Uh, we talked to some other chassis shops. We do not need these bars uh, for any NHRA rules. So Stephen's gonna start on that now. This may seem like we're going backwards, but we're honestly going forward. And uh, I think this is gonna help a lot. It's gonna give the interior more space for one. And uh, for two, we're gonna be able to get the trans mount done to where that trans can come in and out, which is definitely one of the most important sides of this whole thing. And then we can make a new little tran we'll make a new little drive shaft cover or modify that one. I think this is a good idea and uh, yeah. something that needs to be done. We gotta figure out how to go forward, stiffening the firewall, making the transmission come in and out real easy. There's a few things that just have to be done to give us success. So it's a tough call, but I think this is the right one. So we're gonna go with that and uh, drop down below in the comments and let me know what you think, cause I'll sure I'm gonna know. So Eric hadn't seen the carnage yet. So with a fine eye, we decided to look at the rod. <gasps> I see it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been avoiding looking at it. It's a uh, bent. And this is just the one we looked at. Is that that same hole? This hey, is, yes. At least it bent instead of broke. This is the hole that the head gasket went and we fire slotted. Well, good thing you checked it. So. Not good at all. On the other side note, this is coming out pretty good. We need to just measure these spacers, make a couple, tack those down there, tack those down there, and we're good. So let's Tacky get her done. Tack. Tacky tack. door on. Yeah. 
That's looking good. The only thing is if I trim a little and they don't slide off because of the fender. Those oh, really? hinges are a little long. Yeah. Because it was made, these hinges and everything were made for a one piece. Yeah, oh. they were made back in. So they were made to have room without a fender to lift off. Yeah. Usually, oh, open it real quick. It's just steady work. Yeah, it's just a little. Just move that down to the fender and get them on. Because usually you have to open it like this to get it off. That's usually how you slide them off. Yeah, they're just. I mean, we can look at them a little more. Yeah. Just because, like, you see well, those ones are. Shaves a ton of weight. Yeah. Looks great. Yeah, he's got one more to do. Yeah. But making progress. All right, guys, now that I've got all this slide stuff welded, we're going to grab the transmission. Toss it back in, slide it in, strap it down, and then I want to feel this clutch. So let's go ahead and uh, help Jame out and uh, get this thing in. Yeah. Hot dog. Hot dog. All right, we're going to do this for the camera. All right, you guys ready? Try and sit on the bar. Bam. And that's how that works. That's good. <laughs> that's cool. Works perfect. Put yeah. a couple bolts in, band clamp it down, and then we're going to push the clutch and see how it feels. So let's find a couple hose clamps, Steven. All right, let's push the clutch and see if things feel stiffer or what's going to move now. What's next on the movement? Did you even tighten the clamps, Steve? Yeah. Okay. You tighten the clamps. Hey, the Out here? Push it. I think I heard you. Every time you push it. Here, buddy. So it's probably the it's pedal now. There, yeah. No, it's just the pedal. Now it's Let just me watch the pedal. up here. Ready? Yeah. It's pulling down over there, which is yeah. yeah, it still moves everything. Whole rain tray. Well, it's not picking the transmission up now. Yeah, do it again. I think we add support like here. The bar of the pedal is on, moves a little. Oh, oh, that moves a lot. Actually. No, push it. I see it. That top bar moves a no, lot. No, I see it. I see it, Brent. So. Yep, right at that mount, right there. I think your light's right in my way. Yep, push it, Brent. Yep, that's it. That's it, we need to sturdy that up. Yep. Now it's moving the whole bar. Moves the dash bar. So it may everything. just need a bottom mounted clutch pedal or something. Ugh. A bar to, I don't know, I am confused. All right, so as we push the clutch, we are still moving everything, still bending things. The brace really didn't brace up what we wanted to brace. Okay, so I have two theories on where we could put bars. We could go from here. That's what I was thinking. Diagonal up to it, and then from it, from this corner, over to that one that comes up. That one that comes up above the trans. Yeah, we go can. one that way and then one this way. You look at a regular pro stock car, car that don't, doesn't like. So it drives me crazy. Well, we, all right, so Jamie got his doors on. Steven got his front end on. That looks so good. Goofy with a parachute and a new trailer hitch. Oh, my dude. Making things happen. He's got his carbon dash, his carbon fenders, really coming together. And last but not least, we got the slide brackets done on Shona. So, I'm gonna continue to work away on this little bad boy. See if I can't get this hot rod all buttoned up, worked out to the track and running. I'm just gonna stick with it, push as hard as I did on like the Freedom Civic and see if we can't get it done. Uh, the Freedom Civic, we did get that block from Roman it's an 87 bore. We're gonna get some pistons on the way. We've got some rods on the way. So the Freedom Civic will be back up in no time as well with a sleeve block. So I'm pretty excited about that too. But guys, showing up is certainly coming. I am uh, 
I'm digging the improvements. The changes we're making is gonna make it a lot nicer to work on, to service. We're gonna get that, the pedals down there figured out. Let's get this movement out of it and get this thing working. Looking up some pictures of some pro stock clutch pedals and that stuff. And there's some different designs and I think I'm gonna just try to go with whatever standard on like a pro stock car and get this thing straight because as it sits right now, that is not gonna work. It will not do what we want it to. And you know, I want this thing right. And then Steven and I need to make a fixture for our new front struts. So we need to get working on that as well and uh, get this thing all squared up and start doing some front suspension. We're gonna learn. Something I haven't tackled before, but I've got a pretty good idea on how to do it. So we're gonna tackle that. We're gonna have a good time and uh, we're gonna keep pushing. So that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.